Hey, good morning, Vernal Christian Church. Good to see you this morning. Hey, if you're making your way on in, come on in, grab a seat. We're excited to worship with you. And if you're just checking in online, thanks for being here. Feel free to share it, comment, send us a message uh, throughout the whole morning. We'd love to connect with you. Hey, um, my name is Kyle Mounty. I'm one of the pastors here in this morning. Uh, we just want to focus on prayer for just a bit. Uh, quick announcement. After service, if you are one of the men in this congregation and you're at all interested in Promise Keepers, Randy and the fellas have done a lot of work to uh, kind of get real close to finalizing travel plans. We just need to know what works for you. So if you could, Randy will be here. Uh, if you could just meet with him or come up front right after service, we want to talk through some options and we want to get that trip planned. Prayer. Prayer is important. And so if this is your first time joining us, um, just know we're so glad you're here. But one of the aspects we do on Sunday morning is we have those pink prayer cards. They should be under the seats, in some bulletins, around the edges. We have people that love to pray during service, and we want to pray specific prayers with you. So if you would, fill those out. And after the first song, one of our deacons will be around to grab those. Uh, also, as a part of our prayer ministry, this next upcoming week is National Day of Prayer, is Thursday. And so what we're going to do, and one of the things we've done in the past is a 24-hour prayer vigil. And how that works is outside in the Welcome Center, we have a sign-up sheet with just one-hour time slots starting Wednesday at 6 p.m., going Thursday through 6 p.m. So if you want, uh, we'll have prompts, we'll have everything you need. This space will be open and unlocked all 24 hours. You can just come in. There'll be some prompts, uh, and we want to just be a church that prays. Then we're going to end it with something fun. Thursday night, this Thursday night at 630, if it's the only thing you can make, please come. We're going to have just a worship night and prayer night in this place, about an hour, hour and a half. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. That's this Thursday night at 630. Here's why we pray, and here's why we pray specific prayers, because when we communicate and talk to our God in heaven who cares for us, we just get overwhelmed by the blessings he has. I want to show you a real example of what happened to us just this week. So I'm the student minister. I deal with high school and middle school teens. Each year we kick off our fundraising for summer camps by the yard sale. And I just want to say, if you at all came and supported or gave items and donations or came and bought, thank you. Seriously, thank you. Because last year, we were able to have the yard sale right before the whole country was shut down because of COVID. And it was our highest record year at 2,600 bucks. That was last year. Never seen that kind of generosity. This year, in less than 24 hours, we raised $5,100. Come on. That's got to work. Now, here's the cool math, because I had a couple people say, what do you need? Let's pray specifically. And I said, well, we've got 21 students. They each, the goal is to raise 300. So that's, uh, if I got terrible math, 6,500 bucks um, is what we're looking at. And we end up with 5,100, and I was thrilled and amazed. But while we were doing the yard sale, come to find out four of our students got scholarship full ride from their church which means the 17 other students split 5,100, which means they each raised 300, which means they're fully raised and ready to go to camp. Come on. That's got to work. Seriously. We might do a few more things just to help with travel costs and, and to be able to benefit the cost of sponsors and some other things like that. But from the bottom of all our hearts, church, thank you. And really, all glory to God. So come on, give some praises. Come on. Amen. Seriously incredible. That's why we want to pray with those salmon cards. That's why we want to pray National Day of Prayer. That's why we want to worship together and pray in this place this morning. Because God is moving. And he's moving in our lives. Amen. So come on, Father in heaven, Lord, thank you. Thank you for just overwhelming us with your grace and peace and joy and blessings beyond measure, more than we could ever ask or imagine, more than, man, we get so afraid of praying for exactly what we need, but God, you know what we need, and you love and care for us so much that you're willing to give us what we need, even when we don't know what we need, because Father, that's what you do. You care after us, and you provide for us, and God, you give us Christ. Because he's all we need. 
So, Lord, this morning as we praise you, we just come humbly. God, knee, knees bent, arms raised, surrendering to you. God, ready, ready to just give you all the glory and credit. So, God, this morning as we pray, um, I, I just pray that, man, this atmosphere is one of celebration. We're celebrating how much you have done for us and through us and around us today and in our past, even when we didn't see it, even when we didn't think it lined up. But, God, it's all you and your perfect timing and your perfect path. And so, God, thank you for leading us down and so we can find the grace and peace and joy that comes of it, God. Um, we love you. It's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. We'll ask you to please stand with us. and We're going to praise and we're going to worship our Lord and our King.
Amen, amen. We serve a mighty God, amen. amen. This is a new song, and I hope you guys listen to the words. Let it just flow through you. It's an amazing, amazing song.
Do you let God fight your battles or do you try to go in there and do it all by yourself? I know I do. Sometimes I don't rely on God. And I'm learning more and more and more that I need to just step back and hand it over and lay it at his feet. Because I love that, that visual of laying things at God's feet. Listen.
Your glory, Lord God, is what we long for. We want to be overcome by your presence, Lord God. I pray for your Holy Spirit. Let it permeate this place. Let it permeate each and every one of us. I pray, Lord God, for an overflowing in this place. That we would just be able to walk out of here today with the knowledge and with the Holy Spirit filling us to the point that we just overflow to everyone around us. That we would just show people the glory of God shining through our lives, shining through our worship, shining through our service, Lord God. We love you and we praise you and your Holy Spirit is welcome here. 
Ascent, you are dismissed. Online, VCC online, hey, good to see you. Man, we are so glad you are here. You know why? Because you belong here. You belong here. If you haven't noticed, we are in a series right now called You Belong Here. And uh, we've taken, man, a full month, a full month to discover the next steps that God has for us as uh, Christ followers at VCC. And uh, so what we've done the first week we looked at our first step, which was explore. And I told you a little story about a, a tourist that went to the Australian outback. And when he went out there, he, he saw all of these cattle, but he never saw any fences. And he didn't understand. And he asked the farmer, why don't you have fences? And he said, we don't need fences. We just need a good water source. We just need a good water source. And, and so the, the, the idea was, man, in church, we don't need fences. Fences keep people in, yes, but they also keep people out. But what we really need is we need a spiritual source, and that spiritual source is Jesus himself. So that was our first step. Our second step was encounter with God. It was week two. And uh, I told the story of a guy named Mephibosheth, and uh, we nicknamed him Meth for short. And uh, <laughs> poor guy, man, he lost his grandpa and his dad on the same day that he broke both his legs. Hard life. And off he went into the desert. And we didn't see him for decades. And then all of a sudden, King David invites him to the palace. And he says, man, here's all of your grandpa's land. And you come and eat at the table with me. And so his encounter with God was not what he expected. And that's, that's what it looks like in our journey. We, we explore and then we encounter. And then the third week, we talked about engage, which was last week. And uh, we laid out our five-year vision as a church. And man, I challenge you guys, let's, let's all get on board. Let's not do the 80-20 thing. Let's have 100% of us behind the, the vision that God has for us. And I got to tell you, just preparing that message for last week challenged me. And so I hope it challenged you as well, all right? And now we're in the, the fourth and final week of the series, You Belong Here. And this uh, next step in our discipleship pathway is called Empower. Empower. And uh, this is our leadership step. And we called it empower instead of leadership because that is the style of leadership that we saw in Jesus. He empowered people to, to go and to do an amazing things in their lives. And it's a, it's a form of servant leadership that, that supports and, and encourages and empowers others to, to reach their full potential as a Christ follower. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So you belong here. And because you belong here, it's our responsibility, you know, to to give you a place where your gifts and talents can be fully utilized. And so that's what we're trying to do here as a church, right? Now, there's something that it's important to know that every single one of us have gifts and talents. Everyone. I read a study one time that said the average person has 600 talents. 600. So I'd look at your neighbor and go, dude, you're talented, man. Okay, how awkward was that saying that to your mom? That was weird, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I love watching people living in their giftedness and in their talent. I love it. Uh, when, when Kossi and I first moved here, like a day or, or so later, our friend Xander dropped a trailer off at our house, Xander McIntyre, and, uh, so that we could utilize his trailer. And we both thought, man, he's a nice guy, but man, he's so quiet. Like he doesn't say anything, you know? Does he even speak? And so then we got invited to one of his auctions. <laughs> and that same quiet guy was up there with the microphone. But if that, if that, 2000, blah, 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 blah. Come on, it's only money. Blah, 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 blah. And we're like, who is this guy, you know? <laughs> but what I love about Xander is, man, he's taken that gift that he's got to lead auctions 
And just in the last two or three weeks, I've seen him uh, volunteer his services at two fundraisers. We had the spring fling a couple weeks ago here, and Xander was there, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then right after that, um, at the school at UCBA, they, they had their cornhole tournament, which some of us entered and did very badly in. I won't say who. Um, but there he was again, just raising thousands of money for charity, man. Taking his gifts, taking his talents, and used it in a way that, man, just brings God glory, you know. I love seeing that. I get a real kick out of seeing God work through someone like that. So that's pretty cool. But here's the thing. We all have gifts and talents, every one of us, okay. And um, so we've got to take this next step of, of taking those gifts and talents to empower others, right, to, so that they can reach their full potential as well. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at two characters in the Bible, uh, the first king of Israel and the second king of Israel. So the first king of Israel was Saul, second king was David. And uh, we're going to find out that their stories start out similar, but they don't end similar, okay? They start out the same. And uh, so when we're introduced to Saul, here's what's happening. I'll give you a picture. His family have lost their donkeys. Anyone ever lost a donkey before? It wouldn't surprise me in Vernal. You've lost a donkey. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> They've lost their donkeys, and he's out with, you know, with, with his people, and they're looking for their donkeys. They can't find them anywhere. And then one of his servants says, I've got an idea. Dang, there's a man of God. He's a prophet. His name's Samuel. Maybe he'll know where our donkeys are. Let's go and ask him. So they make their way over to Samuel. They eventually find Samuel, and uh, they're like, uh, Samuel, have you, have you seen our donkeys? You know, and he goes, hey, your donkeys are fine. I'll tell you where they are later. But I'm glad you came because I've got a message from God for you. Not what he expected. So Saul shows up. Look at his donkeys. And this guy says, no, no, no. Hey, there's, uh, there's something else here that I need to tell you. And uh, your donkeys are fine. But here's what he says. 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 1. If you're taking notes. 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 1. Then Samuel took a flask of olive oil and poured it over Saul's head. Is that just the funniest thing ever? <laughs> I'm serious. Like if you come over to my house and I pour a bottle of oil over your head, you'd be like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, back to the message. Um, <laughs> then he kissed Saul, which is also pretty weird. He kissed Saul and he said, I am doing this. Because the Lord has appointed you to be the ruler over Israel, his special possession. He's like, man, you're called. So he shows up looking for donkeys. He gets a bunch of oil put on his head. And he discovers that he's got the keys to the kingdom. That he's going to be the first king of Israel. What? This is crazy. Anyway, that's Saul. All right. The second one is David. This shows up about six chapters later in 1 Samuel. And his story starts out, he's not looking for donkeys, but what he is doing, he's out in the field and he's looking after sheep and goats. He's a shepherd, all right? So he's out there. So the same guy, Samuel's got his olive oil and he's like, I'm going to go find this David, right? And I'm going to find the next king of Israel. And so he, he comes to his house, to David's house, and David's father, Jesse, comes out and, and Samuel says, I'm here to, to appoint the, the next king of Israel, the second king. And so, so Jesse starts bringing his sons out one by one. And, and as they come out, man, uh, Samuel's like, no, not him. Uh-uh, no, not him. Nope, nope, next one. No, not him, not him. Go through seven siblings, and none of them are going to be the second king of Israel. He goes, man, is, is there anyone else? He's like, yeah, yeah, I got, I got this boy out in the field. He's, he's looking up for the sheep and goats. His name's David. Well, go get him. So they go get him. They bring him in. David walks into the house. Here's what happens. In uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16. So... As David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took his flask of olive oil he had brought, and he anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. And then Samuel returned to Ramah. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Saul, David, oil, anointed, king, king, right? We got, you got the story. You know where we're going with this. So but here's the thing. When, when we're introduced to these two guys, we... We see three truths about their lives, and I want to share those with you. First one, they were called to it. They were called to be king. King number one, king number two, they were called to it. Uh, God had a purpose for them. And it's clear, man, because they were anointed with oil, and, and they were told, God wants you to be king over Israel. So they were called to it, and they knew it. The second one is they were gifted for it. They were gifted for it. Now, gifting in the Bible is, is where you're given the tools 
to, to do this assignment that you've been given, to carry out the calling that God has in your life. He gives you the tools to do that. And uh, so they call to it, they give to it, and the third thing is that others could see it. Other people could see it. God could see it. Samuel the prophet could see it. And all of Israel could see it. So others could see it as well. We're told that in the, in the scriptures that when Saul was on his way home after that visit with Samuel, besides having oil of his hair, right, he that says that the Spirit of God came powerfully on him. And he began to prophesy. Now prophesy means predicting a specific thing that's going to happen in the future. So all of a sudden, yeah, he's starting to talk about things that are going to happen one day in the future. And, and so, man, you know, people are walking by, they're like, oh, my word, this is incredible. Is he, is he now also a prophet, you know? So people could see that he had this gift on him. They could see God's thumbprint on him. It was clear to everybody that this guy had something different about him. And we just read where it said that the Spirit of God came powerfully upon David. And everybody there recognized that too. In fact, when Saul was king, uh, he, man, he, he needed some help, and he was looking for somebody to help him. One of his servants says, I know a guy, I know a guy, and he said, man, he's, he's a great musician, and he's a man of war, and he's a leader, and he's good looking, and uh, so that put me out of the picture, and the Spirit of God is all over him, right, and he said, no, his name is David, so people knew, man, there's something special about David too, so Saul had this, this thing where people could see it, and David had this thing where people could see it, and, and the thing is that People can tell when you have a gifting, when you have a talent. It's obvious to those around you. It's easy for people to look at somebody else and, and to see their talent and their giftedness and to see the thumbprint of God on their lives. And we don't have to look that far. One of my favorites of all time is Mother Teresa. It was clear, man. If you saw Mother Teresa, you know that she was gifted to serve people. That was her life, and she lived, lived her whole life for that. People like Billy Graham. It clearly, you know, the guy's got a gift or had a gift, you know, to preach and to motivate and, and to encourage others to follow Jesus. That was his gift. It was his talent. We could see that, right? We think about musicians like Chris Tomlin or Lauren Daigle. You're like, oh, my gosh, these guys, they've got this gift to write music and sing. It moves our hearts and touches us. And, man, it's beautiful, you know? In sport, we look at people like Wayne Gretzky or Michael Jordan or Alex Morgan, the U.S. women's soccer captain. We're like, man, they are so gifted and so talented. And we can see that. It's obvious to everybody that's watching that, they, that they're gifted and they're talented. So why is it so hard for us as followers of Christ to look in the mirror and to see that God has gifted us too? Why is that so hard? You know, if I had 20 bucks for every time a Christ follower said to me, you know, I just, I'm just not a leader. I'd go and buy a side-by-side, -side, and of course, see, you and I would be up in the mountains this afternoon. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's so hard for us to look in the mirror and to see God's thumbprint on our lives. And, and, and we go, man, I, I just don't have what it takes. You know, but Saul and David, man, they're, they're, uh, they're there and they're doing their thing. They're gifted as leaders and people can see it. But for you and I, man, there's so many of you sitting in this room right now who are leaders and you don't see it. You don't see it. You dismiss it. No, no, not me. Someone else. Someone else. But here's the truth. If you're a follower of Christ, those three things that we said about David and Saul are true about you too. One, you are called to it. You are called to it. God has put a call in your life. Jesus, Jesus didn't just save us from our sins just for salvation, man. He saved us for a purpose too. He saved us for a purpose. There's a reason why you are a Christ follower. You know, and you, you, our purpose on this earth, what is it? What have you called me to, Lord? What have you called me to? What purpose has God placed you here for? Now, we know, like, as a Christ follower, all of us are called to make disciples. That's for all of us. But there may be something even more specific just for you. Even more specific just for you. Maybe you've seen kids in the foster care system, and you're like, man, I, I don't like that. I, it's not okay with God. It's not okay with me. So I'm going to open up my home and take in some kids. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show them the love of an earthly family, and I'm going to show them the love of their heavenly father. And maybe that's your calling, right? Or maybe you feel like, man, I need to start a business and, and just show people what it looks like to, to work in an environment that's affirming and uplifting. And that anyone who we come in contact with, our company, man, they're gonna, we're going to serve them in the same way that Jesus served the world. And we're going to make a difference that way. Maybe that's your calling. 
Or maybe you're called, you know, to be a stay-at-home parent, to raise up young disciples of Christ and to show them love and manners and all these beautiful, amazing things. Maybe that's your calling. That's possible, right? Maybe your calling is to serve right here at VCC in the kids' zone or on the prayer team or on the worship team or, or in some way to take your gifts and your talents and, and bless those around you and so that maybe on the welcome team when someone walks in, they just feel loved and welcome. Maybe that's your gift. But here's the thing, man. If you, if you don't know what your specific calling is, right, that's okay because here's what I do know. When God calls you to something, He's going to make it clear. He's going to... He's going to put someone on stage to say, you've got gifts and talents. He just did it this morning. You have gifts. You have talents. He's got a calling on your life. And he wants you to know that, man, you need to live in that. So you need to open your eyes. Open your ears. right? Pay close attention because you don't want to miss it. Why would you want to miss the very purpose that you were created for? Don't miss it. This is a big deal. That's important. So he's called you. So know that. Look at the person next to you and say, he's called me. <laughs> Cosi, you're all on your own. Who are you talking to? There's no one there. My wife is an imaginary friend. She's talking to you right in the front here. <laughs> so he's called you, but he hasn't only called you, man. He has gifted you for it too. He has gifted you for it. He's given you the tools to carry out that calling um, and that he's placed on you. Romans 12 verse 6 says this. This is the Apostle Paul talking to the church. In his grace... God has given different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, well, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, well, do it gladly. He's like, do it, man. Whatever your gift is, do it well. Do it well. And we all have different gifts, and that's what makes an organization like the church function so well. Is because we're all different. We all have different gifts and talents, and when they all come together, something beautiful happens. All right, now today's message is, is on leadership and empowering others, right? So, so let me say this. If God has given you the leadership ability, take that responsibility seriously. And lead faithfully. Lead faithfully. And what the Apostle Paul says is, man, if you're a follower of Christ, God has given you a gift, so don't hold back. Don't hold back. Get involved. Go for it. First Peter 4.10 tells us that God's gifts of grace come in many forms. Each of you has received a gift in order to serve others. You should use it faithfully. Use it faithfully. Now, you might be wondering, well... What would you say, Sean, to those of us who don't know what our gifting is? Well, let's go to the third one. Others can see it. Others can see your gifting. So ask somebody. Ask somebody. Ask some questions. Perhaps someone else will see your gifts in the same way that Samuel saw the giftedness of, of Saul and David. Maybe somebody else sees giftedness in you that you don't see in yourself. So ask somebody. Hey, what do you see that God has gifted me with? What are my gifts? What's that look like? What is it that I do? Or what is it that you see that, that God is his thumbprint on my life? What do you see? You know, this is a great discussion on the car ride home today. You know, for your spouse, your kids, whoever's driving with you. Hey, what do you think my gifts are? Right? Or get together. Get a couple of friends together from church and, and just say, hey, you know, we've been talking about this thing at church. Where do you see that God has gifted me? might be a great life group discussion. Have, you know, take life group and everyone just start talking about what you see in each other and help each other. Man, ask somebody because others can see your giftedness even when you cannot see it. Another way is you could take a shape assessment. All right? So shape is an acronym. S is spiritual gifts. The H is your heart. This is what you naturally love. Where do you naturally gravitate toward? A are your abilities. What are you good at? What are you good at? P is your personality. We all have a different personality, right? And understanding what our personality is helps us to know what we should do. And almost as importantly, helps us to know what we shouldn't do, right? <laughs> so, yeah, personality is important. Experiences. What have you done and experienced in your life 
that could be a blessing to those around you. It's called the Shape Assessment. And you can take it online. In your bulletin uh, is a, a, a web address, freeshapetest.com. When you're done with that, please email it to us, vcc at stradanet.com, and we'll help plug you in somewhere where you could serve in the church. It'd be awesome, man. It'd be awesome. We'd love that. But God has given you what you need, right, to carry out the calling that is placed in your life. He has. But what are you going to do with that gifting? What are you going to do with it? See, Saul and David had two drastically different responses to the calling on their lives. Drastically different. And here's the thing. David was mentioned 60 times in the New Testament. Guess how many times Saul was mentioned in the New Testament? Zero. None. Because of their response to the calling on their lives. Right? So one of the next times that we see that Saul is mentioned in the Bible after being anointed, man, uh, to be king, Samuel gathers the whole nation together. He gets everybody together so they can choose the first king of Israel. So all the people are there. They come from all over the place. They're right there. But there's two people who know who the next king's going to be. Samuel knows and Saul knows, right? And so, man, they start the whole process. And they, so they pick the tribe that the king is going to come from. Guess whose tribe they picked? Saul's tribe, of course. Then they pick the clan, Saul's clan. They pick the family, Saul's family. Then it comes time to pick the man, and they pick Saul. They pick the individual, right? But here's what happens. Check this out. 1 Samuel 10, 21. And finally, Saul, son of Kish, was chosen from among them. But when they looked for him, he had disappeared. They asked the Lord, where is he? The Lord replied, he's hiding among the baggage. Are you kidding me? Saul is selected. He knew he was called. He was gifted for it. Everybody else could see his giftedness and his talents. And here's what he goes. He's like, no, 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 I'm going to hide away, man. He's literally hiding behind the baggage. Everyone came from all over the country, and they brought luggage with them. They placed it there. He goes and hides in all of that. They can't find him. The Scriptures tell us that, that he was the head and shoulders. He was taller than anyone else in Israel and better looking than all of them. So this big old tall dude is hiding behind the luggage. It's pretty hilarious, actually. It's pretty funny. Does that sound familiar to any of you? Like we're called to it, we're gifted for it, everyone else can see it, but we find ourselves hiding behind the baggage, the baggage of our past. We go and we hide there. We say things like, I don't have what it takes. Or we, we like, man, the last time I tried to lead a church, it didn't go so well. We hide in the baggage of our past. We hide in the baggage of our insecurities. That's what we do. God, I don't, I don't know enough about the Bible. I, I couldn't possibly lead a life group. We'll say things like that. Well, God, what if I step out and I fail? What will that say about me? And what will that say about you? And so we're like, nah, behind the baggage. Maybe it's our busyness. We get so busy. God, I know you delivered me from addiction, and you've called me to help other people with their addiction. But like, work is super busy, man. You don't understand. It's so busy. Lord, I know you've called me to help in student ministries and, and summit on Wednesday nights because student ministry changed my life. But, but you know, my kids, man, they play sport. And I mean, you know, I mean, you know how it is. You know, Lord, right? You know. You understand, right? We get so busy. Or maybe for you, the baggage you hide behind is comparison. We look around, we're like, man, that person is such a, so much of a better leader than I am. I, I could never do what they do. You know, there's no way, right? Here's the problem, guys. If we're buried in our baggage, we cannot go where God wants to take us. We cannot go there. If we won't leave our baggage behind, we won't be who God has called us to be right now. So if you're struggling with the baggage of your life, the best thing you can do is surround yourself with other people who will speak truth into your life. At VCC, we call it side-by-side -side discipleship. Find someone who will speak to you and talk you out from behind the baggage and say, come on, you got this, go. You can do this. You got it. 
and, and then empower each other. Empower folks to, to get out and go do that. Because, man, when we step out, there is a path. There's, a, there's something that God has got for us to do. A better way. You see in our two stories, right? We see Saul, man, hiding behind the baggage. Well, David responded differently than Saul. So right after he was anointed to be the, the second king of Israel, he, he shows up to the battle lines. He's taking food for his brothers or in a war against the Philistines. And so he's taking chow to them, you know, Taco Bell. I don't know what he was taking, but he's got this food and he, he shows up at the battle lines. And, and when he gets there, he sees the Philistine army challenging his people, challenging the people of Israel. And in particular, there was a big dude standing there. His name is Goliath, and, and he's got a big mouth, man. He's mouthing off. And, he, and his, man, he, he's standing there. He sees his people um, across the lines, battle lines, and, and no one's doing anything about it. They're all hiding. Here's what David, little shepherd boy, did in response. 1 Samuel chapter 17. He walks up. Now he's a boy, remember? David asked the soldiers standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Philistine anyway that is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? <laughs> a little bit of a different response than Saul, right? He's ticked off, man. David's ready to open a can. He's ready. Here's what happened. David stepped into his giftedness. Saul ran away from his giftedness. David took that giant down. He ended it right there. You see, when Saul was called to it and gifted for it and everybody else could see it, he hid in the baggage and he said this, God, I don't think I have what it takes. I don't think I have what it takes. But David... He stepped up for battle, man. He did not say, God, I don't feel like I have what it takes. Here's what he said. He said, God, take what I have. Take what I have. Here I am. And when you and I say, God, I don't think I have what it takes. I don't think I can lead. I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do that. When we're doing that, we're basing the outcome upon our ability, our own ability. But when we say, God, take what I have. We're demonstrating faith because here's the deal, and you need to know this, the battle is already won. It is already won. When David said that, he knew that guy's going down. Not because he was such a powerful, incredible physical specimen, <laughs> you know? No, he knew it, man, because the, the, one, the war was over, it was done, and he knew it. And for you and I as followers of Christ, the battle has been won. Jesus won the war on the cross. You with me? It's been won. Now, there might be some battles in the way that you and I lose, but the war is won. I can't guarantee you're going to win every single battle in your life. But I can guarantee you the war has been won for you already. So here's what it is. Being gifted means that you have something to give. You've been given your gifts, your talents for a reason. It's something that you can give. Now, I know this is tough, man. I, I'm going to be pretty transparent. There's some days I wake up and I'm hanging out in the baggage, to be honest with you. God, I don't feel like I have what it takes to be a great husband today. I don't. God, I, I don't think I have what it takes to be a father, man. The responsibility of that is overwhelming. I don't think I've got what it takes. Sometimes I don't feel like I have what it takes to be your pastor. <laughs> Honestly, I also have insecurities, and I know we do. But the thing is, the outcome is not dependent on me. It's dependent upon the one who is with me. It's dependent upon the one who is inside of me. The war has been won. And see, the Spirit of God came powerfully upon David. And the Spirit of God, if you're a follower of Christ, the Spirit of God comes powerfully upon you as well. And He's gifted you for what He's called you to. And I know sometimes we look in the mirror and we go, man, I'm just not as spectacular as that other person. Don't confuse spectacular with significant. 
We don't have to be spectacular. God has given each of you, you and I, significant gifts. And you belong here. And he has gifted you perfectly for this family. Perfectly. So step into that gift and that talent that God has given you. And then empower those around you to step into their gift and talent that God has given them. Walk side by side with somebody. Find someone you can say, let's go. Let's go. Let's take that next step together. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Don't hide behind the baggage. Step up and say, God, here is what I have. And you see what he does with that. Blow your mind. Take what I have, Lord, and use it for your glory. Do we do that? All right, let's pray together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, remind us this morning that you've given us a, a gift for a purpose. Father, I pray that we would feel your spirit, Lord, inside of us as we step into this new season at VCC. Father, in those days that when we wake up in the baggage, in the luggage, pray that you would call us out, Father, that you would guide us and lead us into this calling that you have for us, that you have placed on us. Please, Father, we pray for that this morning. Guys, with every eye closed, every head bowed, just to stay right there with me. Stay right there with me in this prayer. I know there's some of you that are watching online today and some of you in this room today. You haven't made the decision to follow Jesus yet. You haven't made him the Lord of your life. Now please hear me that God has a purpose for your life. And the ultimate purpose for your life is to be in a relationship with him. That is the reason we were created. But unfortunately, because of our sin, because of your sin, that relationship with God has been severed. The good news, the gospel is that God looked at the distance between you and him and he said, nah, that's not okay with me. And so he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to live a perfect life, to die on the cross and to be raised from the grave three days later. And he did that so that we would no longer be separated from God, but that we would be in an eternal relationship with him and have a purpose to live every single day. And I'm here, and you're here, and if you're saying, man, Lord, I'm ready to receive your grace. I'm ready to receive this forgiveness. I'm ready to have an eternal relationship with you, God. I want to be forgiven of my sins, and I'm ready to make you the Lord of my life. If you're at that spot today, you're right here, you're ready for that. Every eye is closed, every head is bowed, no one is looking around. Man, if you are ready to make that decision, I, I want you to raise your hand right now I want you to raise your hand right now if you have never made that decision thank you guys thank you I'm going to ask you to pray with me today and and here's what I'm going to do I'm going to ask the whole church here to pray at the same time all of us together and I'm so excited that there's some here today who said man today is my first time I'm doing that today but for the rest of us those of us who have been around for a long time Man, we can pray this prayer as well today. So I want every voice together, all of us praying out loud together. Just follow my prayer. You ready? Heavenly Father, please forgive me for my sin. I believe Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the grave so that I could be saved. Today I confess that you are the Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord, for the new life you've given me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I'm so proud of those of you who made that decision today. It's a big day. It's a beautiful day. Your next step is baptism, water baptism. And so next Sunday, on Mother's Day, May the 9th, we're going to have baptisms right here during our service. And so if you made that decision today, come and get baptized next Sunday. And if you're pretty new in your faith, and you have not been baptized yet, you have not been immersed as a believer, as a follower of Christ, I'd love for you to join us next Sunday in baptism too. 
and are welcome center on a side on table. So next Sunday, we'll get in touch with you. We'll give you all the details. Next Sunday, Mother's Day, it's going to be a fantastic day where we see some baptisms happen right here. It'll be awesome. And in addition, as your next step of faith in your journey, we, we offer a class, a course actually, called Christian.